Hey, welcome back to Hemlock Ridge. Uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about solar and how I added solar to this cabin for not a lot of money, giving me lights, electric, charging, and even television way back here off grid. That and a whole lot more is coming up on this episode of Hemlock Ridge. Now, I know some of you are going to wonder, why would you like all of this electric and these conveniences when the whole idea is to get off grid and enjoy being unplugged? Well, I do enjoy that, but sometimes it is really nice to be able to flip a switch and have light at night or be able to uh, just watch TV when it's raining for a while. And really being able to do that, uh, recharge your appliances or recharge your devices is a really nice thing uh, and really adds a little bit of creature comforts to the cabin. So let's go ahead and look at some of the things we have. We've got lights. Outlets. And even TV. All from solar and one battery. So this entire system costs less than $300 and I know before I even show you this, there's going to be people in my comments telling me that this is not a good system, that uh, there's a lot better ways to do that. And I know that. I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I'm not living here off grid full time. I just wanted something that would occasionally charge the batteries and get me through a weekend when I'm here. So uh, first of all, what I have up top on the roof are two solar panels. Now, these panels I did get from Wish direct from China. And again, I know that's going to make a few people laugh. Uh, anything you buy on Wish, I've got to warn you, a lot of the claims are not true. These were advertised as 400 watts of solar. No way these are 400 watts of solar. I'm lucky if they're 100 watts of solar. I think each panel is probably about 50 watts. I haven't tested them, but they're just not big enough to be 200 watt panels. The thing I liked about them is they actually sit in between the ribs of the metal roof. And I've um, put them on there with a flexible adhesive and they have held up through two winters now, have not come off. It's great. That way, if I ever do have to take them off, I can. And I didn't need to drill anything into the roof to get them up there. So I don't have to worry about the chance of a, a leak or whatnot. From the roof, you'll see I've got these standard solar connectors. I think they're MP4 connectors. Goes into cable. You want to have good cable so you don't have any voltage loss. I'm running these, I believe it's called in parallel, right? So I'm, I'm daisy chaining them so they're both 12 volts. There's a way if you reverse the polarity, it'll bump them up to 24 volts. I'm running them at 12 volts through, I believe it's a 12 gauge uh, solar cable, comes across uh, underneath the roof eaves, down the back of the cabin, and the wire comes into the cabin where it goes to the solar charge controller. Now the solar charge controller I have mounted on the wall of the cabin. Again, the solar panels come into that. And this is what obviously regulates the voltage going into the battery so it doesn't overcharge or if the battery uh, becomes too discharged, it shuts the power off. Uh, I have to tell you again, this is again, probably an $8 solar controller um, off of Wish. You can also get these on eBay, Amazon, and so forth. It's called a PWM controller, pulse wave modulation. These are less efficient than MPPT controllers. I believe it's about a 30% loss in efficiency when you use these. But again, I'm not here all the time. Uh, works great for what I need it to do. And you can see today it's actually cloudy. There's a little snow on the roof. Uh, I am still generating solar uh, coming in there to my battery. And I've got about 12.4 volts. And the battery is almost full, as I can see by the way the uh, lines are moving up to the top of the battery there. That shows your, your uh, battery level indicator right there. Um, coming out of the solar controller, uh, there are two wires, a positive and negative, that go down to the battery. Now this is a sealed lead acid battery. Uh, it is a bear. It weighs a ton. It's a 100 amp hour battery. Okay. And what that means is that in the course of an hour, it will put out a hundred hours of, or a hundred amps rather, uh, over the course of an hour before it's fully depleted. 
it is a deep cycle battery so that it will sustain being discharged uh, greater than a normal battery would. Um, as a rule of thumb, you don't want to wear these down all the time. Um, it's going to affect the life of the battery a little bit. Uh, but, you know, if you're taking it down uh, 50, 60, 70 percent, you should be okay. Now, why did I go with a lead acid battery and not a lithium battery? Isn't lithium better? It is. However, this cabin is not heated most of the time and cold will kill lithium batteries, drain them a lot faster than lead acid batteries. So uh, this is a little bit better because I'm coming here. The cabin will be well below freezing when I get here and I don't have to worry about the battery being drawn down as much. The other thing you want to be aware of with these batteries, um, you don't want a vented lead acid flooded battery in your cabin because it's going to off gas. Since this is sealed, I'm able to put it under the bench of the dinette here and uh, don't have to worry about it. So again, solar goes into the battery and then coming off the battery, it powers an inverter. This is a Harbor Freight inverter that I bought, uh, Jupiter brand. Works really well. It takes the 12 volt uh, power from the battery and it turns it into AC or alternating current so that you can run regular uh, appliances off of this and so forth. Uh, this is flipped upside down right now, but there's a gauge on there also showing the voltage of the battery and the charge level. Uh, these will draw power that are kind of a parasitic draw even when you're not using AC power. So I usually shut this off when I'm not here or it will draw down the battery eventually. And uh, what's nice about this is there's a little on off switch on it right here. I can turn things on or off. I've got USB ports if I want to uh, charge something through USB as well. And this is only, I believe, a 400 watt inverter. So I didn't get a big inverter because I'm not running microwaves and hair dryers and all those things here. You can certainly get those and there'll be more money. The other thing that you want to be aware of is there's something called a pure sine wave inverter. It's cleaner power to run sensitive electronics and stuff. This is a modified sine wave inverter. However, I've had no problems charging computers, powering laptops, running LED televisions, charging phones. Uh, I've absolutely had not one issue with it. So I've uh, been very, very happy with it as well. Now let's talk about how I get AC power from this inverter into the cabin. And this was a little idea I came up with. You'll see right here that I actually have a plug going into the inverter. That plug goes right down here into this uh, receptacle box, which is then wired into the cabin where there are several other um, receptacles. So basically it's like one big extension cord with receptacle boxes all around the cabin and it can plug right in here to the inverter. Now, why did I do that and not just hardwire something in? Well, this is why. I can unplug my wall receptacles from the inverter and plug it right in here to this box, which says generator. And this box has a line out. I have a piece of conduit going through the wall and it has an extension cord that goes to the generator. So if I want to power the entire cabin, uh, through the generator, all I have to do is unplug one plug and all of my outlets will all of a sudden go over to generator supply. You can obviously get a transfer switch that'll do that automatically. Again, I was doing this on a budget and this works really, really good if you don't want to put in a big transfer switch that's automatically, automatically going to switch from one power source uh, to the other. And here is the junction box I put in. As I mentioned, um, inside there is a piece of conduit behind this. Uh, wires run through to the receptacle that says generator and then from this junction box I have a cord that comes out and that cord goes all the way back there to where I've got my generator so I can actually power the entire cabin and charge my batteries via generator when I'm not getting enough solar or I need to run something that's a little bit higher wattage. So this is a this is a real special thing here. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to go and again spend a lot of money on a generator box so all I did is buy a big Rubbermaid container and I cut ventilation for the air intake, a place to put the uh, plug in there and for the exhaust out of it. 
it's worked really, really well. It keeps all of the precipitation, all of the rain right off of the generator, and it helps muffle the sound a little bit, even though it is a quiet suitcase generator. And you'll see, it just sits right inside of there, completely out of the elements. It doesn't get hot at all in there. And uh, just a really good way, if you want to keep a generator outside, out of the elements, just go buy a really big Rubbermaid container at a big box retailer and cut some ventilation in it, and you're good to go. Now, there is one other piece of equipment on this system here, and that is a battery charger. And the reason I have the battery charger is so that if I am running on generator power, I can recharge the main battery here through the generator. And this is really helpful because from November to about March here in the Great Lakes region, we have a lot of snow and not a lot of sunlight, so solar is almost useless. So I can turn this on and uh, quickly recharge the battery by running the generator for a couple of hours. Now, I did have a different charger. It was a 4-amp charger, and uh, that was just not enough for this battery. Again, this is a 100-amp-hour battery, and with a 4-amp-hour charger, it would take 25 hours to recharge a fully depleted battery. So I found this. It's a little bit bigger. It's got a cooling fan, a little bit noisier, but uh, this will put out about 15 amp hours uh, at maximum capacity and the beauty in that is obviously 15 amp hours well in just under six or seven hours you could have a fully depleted 100 amp hour battery uh, completely charged up as well too so this works uh, really really well now if you're not that inclined to build this yourself you could go get what they call a solar generator it basically looks like a suitcase generator, but it doesn't have an engine in it. It is everything I just showed you in one, basically, box, right? It's got a big battery in it, a lithium battery. Uh, typically, you can get them, you know, in different sizes. You can. It has an inverter built in. It has AC outlets built in. It has solar connections built in, so you can put some solar panels out in the yard and, and recharge it. Uh, here's the thing. They're heavy, and they cost a lot. To get a similar sized solar generator or, or one of these basically generators in a box, you're talking probably almost $2,000 by the time you order the solar panels and bring it to your cabin. Um, this again, around $300 all in between the solar panels, the inverter, the battery, and uh, the charger. So a much bigger difference. So here's a few other tips. Um, you'll see right here, I've got some USB outlets on my solar controller. I went ahead and bought a USB LED light on Amazon, super cool, and I bought a USB extension cord. So this cord goes all the way from the solar controller up there to a little switch, and then over here hanging from the ceiling, I've got this really nice LED light that uh, just hangs there and is powered off of the solar controller. The other thing is you're going to want to make sure you use LED bulbs anywhere in your cabin. Uh, these are LED candelabra bulbs. Again, these are running on alternating current or AC, and um, they only draw about 4 watts each. So this entire chandelier is generating 12 or using 12 watts and will light up the entire cabin really, really bright. Okay, and again, last tip, TV. So how do I get TV way back here off grid? I tried an amplified antenna and I cannot get one over the air station because I'm surrounded by hills and mountains here. But I'm really lucky because I get between two and three bars of cell phone service all the time, never less than two bars. So I'm just able to squeak by getting enough data speed to get a smart TV. And all I do is turn on the hotspot on my phone, with the smart TV, I've got um, pretty much anything that I want to watch uh, on TV, uh, from streaming to uh, live channels to um, over-the-top streaming, you name it, it's all here. So this is a really great way to get TV if uh, you don't have signal and you're off-grid. Um, this TV here, again, all LED, it's Energy Star, uses I think about 50 watts, so it's not going to kill your battery. Another thing. 
Um, a 100 amp hour battery converted to watts is about 1200 watt hours. So you could run something that's going to consume 1200 watts in one hour, or you can consume something that's going to run 100 watts in 12 hours. So with a 50 watt TV, that's going to be able to, to, to basically be on for 24 hours before it would uh, deplete the battery. So it's not going to draw a lot uh, whatsoever, whatsoever. So now that i got it warmed up in here, I think I'm going to have a little bit of lunch and then going to get back outside and do some work. All right, so I'm going to make a little lunch. Um, I did figure out a little trick with my Coleman stove here I'm going to show you. Um, if any of you are using these Coleman stoves to heat up food on a, on a wood stove, uh, this is a great little hack because what I found out is that these are really made for propane stoves. They get a lot hotter and there's a diffuser on the bottom and that diffuser keeps this from getting hot enough when it's on a wood stove. So what you do is when you unfold this, open it up, pull the lid and top up here, just like this, and get it set. And then instead of putting the bottom down, the diffuser, I leave it up. There you go. Now what you can do is I've got the rack in here holding the, uh, the bottom piece, the diffuser in place. And so now you're getting all the heat from the stove going right in there. Wow, it's hot already. So let me go ahead and put in my lunch here. I'll tell you what, I am a lucky man. My wife is a good cook. I'll bring some leftovers here. This is a little chicken piccata. And uh, it's going to warm it right up there in the oven. And that's, uh, that's going to be really good in a few minutes here. Oh, just going to wait for that to heat up now. So uh, after lunch, I'm going to go out. I've been clearing some of the trees I fell to clear this area for the cabin. And uh, they kind of look like a mess. There's just like tops and limbs and stuff all over. So what I'm going to do is try and, uh, now that I can see it, leaves are off it, snow's on the ground, cut up some of those tops, burn them up in a campfire. So uh, come spring, this will be a little bit more clean here. Now we're cooking. Let's see what we got in here. Oh yeah, you can't hear that, but it is absolutely sizzling. This looks great. So, don't have to carry any water back here because we've got snow on the ground right now. So I just put some snow in the pot, put it on the stove. If she came in, it was boiling, let it cool down a little bit. Now I've got water to do my dishes here. So uh, definitely saves you lugging water back here in the middle of the winter when you've got snow like this. So, not a bad deal.
So last summer when I cleared the land for the cabin, uh, a lot of a couple of trees had to get cut down. All of the tops ended up over here, and it's pretty unsightly. I've been wanting to clean it up, so I'm going to go ahead today, try and cut this up a little bit with the chainsaw. I think there's some firewood I can salvage out of here. Try and burn some of the small stuff and just clean this area up a little bit because it's right across from the cabin, and uh, I think it'll be uh, uh, good to get it all out of here. Now kids, don't try this at home. I would not be doing this unless there was snow on the ground and the understory was wet, because this could get out of hand really quickly here. Now we're cooking. Well, made a dent in it. I didn't get it all done today, but uh, at least it's uh, a little bit better than it was. Got the wood stacked over there, and uh, in the spring I'm going to go ahead and split some of that up, use it for firewood, and then I'll finish cleaning the rest of this up here. But I uh, got a lot of the heavy stuff out, so it looks pretty good. Well guys, uh, great day out on the ridge. Thanks for coming along. Glad you got to check out the solar. Glad I got a little work done cleaning up that tree. Uh, it's starting to get a little cool out here and the sun is starting to go down. So I think I'm gonna head back to the cabin and uh, settle in for the night. But as always, thanks for coming. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw today, please hit that like button and hit subscribe. And we'll see you back here next time on Hemlock Ridge.